tape 13 of our uh, development series. Tape 13, and we're going to try to pick up where we left off on tape 12. There's 13 tapes in this set so far. Probably go to 20 before the summer's over. I hope you're getting good information. We try to put some information of value on each one. Let's hope you're taking advantage of it. Now this is a special request. I, everybody's seen the little pro stunt uh, Bobby Hunt uh, type of uh, stooges. This stooge you've seen in all the videos. Let's just go over how this works. A uh, special request from one of my favorite customers, Walt Russell. I'm going to try to make him up uh, a similar stooge today. Uh, obviously the advantage of this stooge is that you don't put any strain on a tail wheel and obviously when a plane gets old uh, there's a chance you'll either pull a tail wheel out or the plane will release uh, when you don't want it to. What happens is as the model is in here of course the stab is here and it's pushing here. It's restrained with a, uh, you can see this is well, this has probably launched 10,000 flights already. Uh, the tail of the plane is here and it's restrained by this piece of wire. So when you run out to the handle and you pull this piece of wire out and that can just flop forward the plane rides through there, nice and clean. And uh, like I said, I'm going to try to make up a little copy of this stooge for uh, Walt Russell of some similar design. I don't know how it'll be, but uh, start working on that this afternoon. And of course, we still have in stock the ordinary stooges, the uh, ordinary, the uh, the typical stooge that the releases from the tail wheel. Step one, we went and bought some real heavy-duty uh, galvanized hinges. Obviously, we don't want this to rust. Obviously, you want to get this pin lubricated real well, so when this, you don't want this to flap down, bounce up, and hit the tail before the plane releases. So we have these nice little bushed hinges. They're galvanized, so they should never rust. Now keep this nice and lubricated. Using galvanized plated 832 screws and blind nuts of course and we're going to cut the back of these off. Now we didn't, we couldn't get a piece of aluminum like this and actually aluminum is overkill. Now we're going to leave this stooge if you can see this, if you make one out of wood, leave it extra long. I'm leaving it longer than my original one so that if, if these holes start to deteriorate from putting nails in you can just move up and use the next hole, move up use the next hole. And actually the middle piece here you're going to use as the, the runway for the tail wheel. So uh, by uh, kind of upgrading this from my original design here, I'm leaving it almost double the length. You can obviously can saw this off anytime you want. You should be able to make this stooge up in one day. Uh, I'm going to try to finish this up today. I'll work on it all day until I get it finished and then put a couple of coats of uh, finish on it so the oil doesn't deteriorate it. But that's the first step and I'll try to run through this real quick as we're doing it. Step one, get the hinges aligned. You gotta leave enough room that the body of an average stunt ship will fit in there. Oops, something just fell out of my ear. You wanna keep this di this dimension kinda constant. And then we're gonna make two little blocks here. I'll make these out of motor mount wood. And then I'll have to fashion these pieces out of plywood. And this is ordinary pipe, uh, whatever you call it, the stuff that insulates pipes. And it never, never has scratched the plane yet. The only time I've ever had trouble with it was I was trying out a pair of uh, new wheels and they were very tiny and skimpy and I pulled on the string too hard and I cocked the plane in a stooge and put a little dent in the body and that's the only damage I've ever done with this stooge. This stooge has been around since uh, 1979 and it's launched a lot of planes.
if we ground these nuts nice and flat, they're 832 screws, nice and flat, so this will lay nice on the concrete or in the grass. Now remember, in grass, what I used to use, I used to make up some five thirty second wire hooks, just the big L-shaped hook, and shove them in the ground about two feet. Or obviously some way of securing this. And an alternative way is to take a, a couple of bricks and lay them on the back of this. Put the hooks in and the bricks too. Uh, all kind of ways, but make sure this is secure. You don't want to have what happened to you, have what happened to Jimmy Casale as the stooge released here and just hit him in the hand with the carbon prop. Not a fun thing to have happen, and that is on one of our videos, uh, Jimmy's scar, and uh, appreciate that he shared the, uh, the information with us. Doesn't want anybody else to have it happen to them. All right, we're going to make the uprights. The right, next thing I had to do, let's go over here to this one, using all 832 uh, screws, recessed the blind nuts, made this up from three quarter inch uh, the same boards that we use to make motor mounts out of rock hard maple. Had to relieve this to go against the hinge. Let's see if we can do this. So you get a nice tight fit in there. And obviously you want a 90 degree angle. So that's the next step is to fashion up these parts. Make a matched pair. Three quarter inch rock hard maple is a good uh, material. Now another thing, these arms need not be uh, any longer than this. If you make them longer than this, what happens, and I've had it happen already, they will jump up and hit the tail on some planes that have a very low tail wheel. So uh, these arms need only be maybe uh, two inches long, and I measured this right off of my stooge to make sure we're making a uh, legitimate copy here of this thing. And uh, after four hours of working on this thing, uh, it's starting to shape up. We mixed up some slow drying epoxy and we epoxied these arms. This one we had to relieve for the screw head because obviously these have to go back full 90 degrees. So we relieved the screw head and now we can file the bottom of these or grind them until these sit perfectly even. That's the next step in this process. And we're putting epoxy on all the screws as we put it together so it'll kind of stay together better in one piece. Hopefully with all the uh, 10 or 15 years this is going to be in use. Alright, we put in the pieces. 832 machine screws and blind nuts. And this is just regular pipe wrapping foam. And we'll obviously cut another piece for that. So there she sits, ready to go. Now, obviously suggest that if you use this in grass, you attach this in three or four places and put a brick on it, a rock, whatever's handy, a toolbox even, and keep the hinges well oiled. Number one priority, oil the hinges. You can see I put little brass bushings in here. Epoxy them in, this epoxy's still drying. Now one of the things is, I purposely drill these holes a little bit cocked to each other so that this rod kind of stays in it. It's not just a sloppy fit and it wouldn't come out with vibration. Obviously this end of the rod you would hook a line and a line clip to and uh, on the other end I suggest using a reel. If you notice I have a reel and of course that reel just reels in the line then. Brass bushings all throughout. You get a lot of launches out of this. And of course, one of the nice things, as we always do, we give uh, same day service. I don't know if I can. Uh... Well, today we're going to start the conversion to convert this over to a Max VS for some testing. We expect Jim will have uh, the motor back to us by the end of the week, so. We sent him a brand new VMAX and we're waiting to get uh, some testing done on this guy with the new Midgley pipe and the 60 pipe. Now one of the things it'll do, it'll allow on this plane, because it's a semi-scale plane, it'll probably be a little prettier with the pipe inside the body, but uh, again, we'll see when we're finished. We still have to chop him up a little bit. 
It's got the 51 in it now. It's flying fine, and we want to obviously have it that we can go back and put the 51 in uh, if we decide later on that's what we want to do. But you got to remember, all this testing, and we will be putting the HP in the yellow plane uh, hopefully later this week. We want to test everything. You know, we just don't want to make... Uh, find one good motor and the Tiger 60 is definitely one good motor so is the 51 to 46 we don't want to find one good motor and then quit while we're ahead we want to test all of them we have Maxis to test we have an HP and we're going to spend the rest of the season doing some test work and I uh, hope you enjoy sharing this uh, little adventure with us Jim in the meantime is working on a Max for us and uh, we'll be looking forward to testing it Get now one of the things we just got in stock today that's real nice is this, uh, it turns a side exhaust 51 or 60 into a, uh, a rear exhaust engine and we're going to have these in stock, they're 30 bucks, anybody's interested, uh, just give me a call on this, special item. Now what we have here, we have sorted out all our motors of course and we have them all in plastic bags. The reason I'm showing this is it's such a good idea to keep the motors in plastic bags, keep the dust and dirt off of them. And obviously these are all motors that have been reworked. They're all run, run in, run in planes and ready to go. All sitting on the wall right now ready to put in aeroplanes. And uh, with a supply of motors like this, all pre-tested, obviously some of them you'll notice I have little notes in. I have each one engraved with uh, what aeroplane it's been in on what day. And uh, I can keep a real good running track in my logbook. The only one left to put in a plane still is the HP. Uh, since we're going to be doing the VMAX thing, I took out one of the VMAXs that had already been reworked and broke in. And it's pretty much ready to go here. Uh, just going to start shoehorning it in uh, as soon as we finish this little episode on the video. But this is how the stuff should be stored. Well, it's pouring rain today, so we're going to do another day of work on this retrofit. Just put a little bit on the screen of what we managed to get done yesterday. Jim Damarell was here, and he helped me all day. We managed to get a nice big tunnel carved right down the middle of the plane. Sealed it up with 16th wood that we, we wet with ammonia and bent into a reverse curve. And we have a nice neat opening down the back here. Of course, this is all going to be refinished real soon. Little opening down the back here for the tomb pipe. We have plenty of cooling area up here. We got rid of two of the scoops, two of the little blivets. And when this is all in, we've done a, a primary test fit. It looks pretty nice. We're going to work on this the rest of the day. And hopefully toward the end of the day, get a, get a look at what this is going to look like when it's all back in one piece. It looks like it's going to be nice. Almost the whole pipe disappears off of the plane when we do this. Should clean it up aerodynamically a little bit. Ready to do the touch-up paint on this. Obviously, when we painted the plane, we saved a little bit of the paint for just such things. And we'll mix the paint up, get it in the gun, and uh, get a coat on this before we start working on the cowling. We got some of the pieces put together here. We're going to work on a pipe mount next, finalizing that. Now this is the tip of the Vico spinner and you can see we have the rod drilled out and of course everything is anodized. This is to keep the weight down in the front. We're trying to bail out all the weight we can off of the front of it. to do is the pipe installation and we're going to work on that right now. And 
we will be, uh, hey, by the end of the day, probably ready to fly. Do is hook up the pipe now, get the tube from George, and we're ready to go out to the field and fly this. Let's hope tomorrow will be a nicer day than today. We'll get out there and do some flying tomorrow. Yeah, today we're doing a little trap testing. We don't have anybody here to help us, so basically going to uh, just run through our whole set of props and see which ones uh, need to be up pitch, which ones need to be down pitch. For this particular plane, so we'll have them ready when we come out to fly to Red Baron. Now you can notice we've got all the props. We've run through, uh, oh, we got three left. Anyway. Adding a little pitch, taking a little bit away, adding a little bit, taking a little bit away until we get them just exactly the way we want. And you notice I took each each one that I've run and I've, I've made a little note on each one. Do I want to add a little pitch or take a little bit away? Then I'll obviously go back and adjust that VMAX gauge a little bit until I get this exactly right. I want to run the motor between 10, 5, and 11, and I want to have a prop that runs in a little on the high range, a little on the low range, and one just right. And I assume by the end of this test session that's exactly what I'll have. Jimmy Damarell finally got here. This is his Snowbird with the uh, Tiger 51. We may get some Red Baron uh, shots today. Now, in flying a Red Baron already, I've got a couple hours of flying on it. Notice a couple of things with the VMAX conversion. In the Red Baron, it changed the vertical CG just a bit. I guess the VMAX is a, uh, has a heavier top end on the motor, and maybe it's, well, well, I don't know exactly, but it didn't make a weight change in it. Had to tweak the trim tab a bit. Another thing was interesting is, even though I'm using the same prop that I used on the 51, it seems like this motor is happier turning a higher RPM, so I'm going to de-pitch this first original prop just a bit. What's going to ruin this day, ultimately, is yesterday Jimmy and uh, George Ventrini and myself were doing some cutting down of trees over by the house. Funny stunt story, and uh, when I took my shoes off, I noticed a whole bunch of blisters on my feet from uh, digging holes and cutting roots with the shovel and sneakers. Always good technology here. And my feet are really killing me today. The old eighth-inch toes are really hurting. So I don't know how long I'm going to go. It's been here since around 9. And even though the air looks a little lumpy right now, it's gone from being totally dead to where you get gusts and then no gusts. 
kind of a funky day. We will try to get some time on the Red Baron today, though. That'll be the primary object of the day and get some of it on video. And we can start doing our run through with a prop testing. We have all seven of the props here. We'll be starting with prop number six. And we're going to run through all the two blades today and hopefully run through the three blades tomorrow. Make some notations on prop loading. So far, two things we found out with the VMAX. Uh, the Fox Volt and the half plug seems to be, the normal RC plug seems to work well. The K and D1L works well. The, uh, the Rossi plug, uh, Walt Menger sent me a Rossi hot plug. Or is it an OS hot plug? Anyway, the one Walt Menger sent uh, worked well, but I only have one of them, so I don't want until I can get some more. Well, we got some Enya plugs to test, and I got some Rossi mediums. So basically, by the time this day is finished, we should have a little bit of a, an idea how this is going to work. Now, we do have the green plane, the red plane, and the red baron, and the yellow plane, all set up with V-Maxes. Midgley has taken all the pipes. He's going to reseal all the pipes. The system we were using with that thin film of heat shrink tape over the pipes hasn't been working well with the V-Max. It apparently runs a lot more pipe pressure than the 51. And so he took the pipes. He's going to seal them up. We should have them back by the end of the week. In the meantime, we're using up the old pipes that John had in his silencer and playing musical chairs, switching a pipe from plane to plane. Also, in the green plane, we have the old 60 pipe with the bend in it. So it doesn't seem real critical to the pipe size. And it seems like it's got a nice wide power range. So uh, once we get the prop styled in, I think today, if we do get some flights on this video, See if Jimmy can uh, shoot some footage for us later. I'm just hoping the weather's going to hold out. We can get some air that's reasonable for testing. And I wish I had the video camera last night. Jeff Stifle brought his uh, son over, his baby. And we had him. We had his baby eating freezy pops. These things on a stick. And his baby regurgitated right on its head, right in front of everybody. It was really priceless, and I didn't have the camera there. The camera was at the house. It's the kind of thing you really need to know about when your intimate friends show you their most intimate moments. Anyway, let's see if we can get some footage of the Red Baron here.
Still testing with number six. Flips prop. session and uh, hope we get some good video. The air is dead right now, but uh, maybe the wind will pick up a little bit and we'll get some meaningful practice here.
Sorry, Wendy. Well, that one completely.
Johnsville Naval Air Station. It's almost 10.30. Okay. We're going to try to fly the uh, sports scale event with the Red Baron today. They're down there practicing. All right. Um, maybe I'll stay here. And then. we're going to fly uh, expert precision aerobatics. So it's a pretty exciting day. Looks like we got a pretty good turnout and the weather looks great. Junior champ Carlos Serra just put in a practice flight here. Well, that's what you guys did. Now I have a thumb muffle because he knew he was losing too much land on the sweaty, and we need a little more power. Flight. What did you think, Carlos? I saw what was happening. What do you think? Shorten the lines? I think he's better. Shorten the lines, though. Yeah. After today. Now Reed's pattern master, Billy Suarez is here. Smile, you're going to be on the evening news, the 5 o'clock news. news. Uncle Weatherby. <laughs> That's his airplane right there. We like that. <laughs> on these things. Yeah, Maintenance. The it was the way it was sitting on the, uh, it was resting on the gear on the seat on the way up. Yeah, yeah. And not only to go flat, but now it's taking a set. <laughs> P82. These are my uh, competition in scale today. The Red Baron's competition here.
Tesco's Bucks Deluxe. Obviously, plans are now available from Ghost Gun Products. Nice 46, 40 size ship. The plans show all the rib stations. Bob Lampy owns United. Top 20 qualifier this year after a long layoff. <laughs> It's here today, it should be nice, and it's really a beautiful sunny day, really a beauty, exceptional day. Now, this blue ship here, when you move the controls, the pilot's head thing. Hey, move the controls on a blue plane, wait, I want to show the pilot's head. Go ahead, move the controls. Look at the pilot's head moves when the controls are fantastic. Walker, you're in trouble. Great. <laughs> Paul Walker's going to cut the canopy right off his plane as we go home. <laughs> How you been, guy? You didn't crash lately, have you? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yes. <laughs> what a first contest. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, brand new ship. Why well, change a tradition, right? Why change anything, right? Right, you got it. I know the feeling. <laughs> that Don Gerber uh, built up and modified slightly. The rest of Don Gerber's Air Force here.
just a traditional hangar which uh, has all the trophies and the sign-up desk in it. Bob Lampion, 1969 national champion. He's looking for a practice site. Brush your teeth lately? I know. <laughs> Man, me with all the personal problems I had. Yeah. <laughs> you made it, huh? I made it, babe. I'll tell you, unemployment's great, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> People shouldn't have to work. You got that right. <laughs> That's my first. How's Peggy and Joe doing? Good, good. good. I tried to talk him to come in, but... How's his eye after the operation? He's doing great. Yeah, he sounded he's good on the phone. Look at these women all covered up here. <laughs> we thought there was going to be string bikini contest oh, today. Yeah. Well, Later, Adam. My wife brought her string bikini. Later. I think Later. somebody wiped the plane off right. with it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Suarez pretending she's in the back cave here. <laughs> <laughs> Checking my glow plug to see if I picked up any oil. Well, with that muffler, that'll happen all the time. That's that's just the typical thing that happens. If you get sick of cleaning out, what you do is before you start the engine, turn it over and put two drops of lighter fluid in the Venturi and just hit it. See Joe Adamusco's first official flight here. We're waiting for him to warm up the judges on the other circle. Starting to get some little breeze now. The breeze is coming up. And thank God, it looked like it was going to be dead air all day. Got a super good, nice turnout. Everybody's got their wife here, it seems like. Uh, the wives always hang out at this contest. They have real bathrooms, flushable bathrooms. A lot of neat stuff over in a hangar. They're training the judges now. We'll get, uh, maybe we can get that flight on video too. Anyway, we're going to try to shoot some video at this contest in case you missed it. Give you an idea of what this one was like. Bob Lampion in back circle practicing with his United. He's got the new Brian Ether 12 and a half, 5 and a half on here. Big Jim Super Tiger 60. It's a bigger version of his little uh, United 35 shift. And as far as I know, he's even started a new version of it. There's a new one coming for, obviously, for next year. Bob's not exactly the fastest builder in the world, but he does build beautiful stuff, and it's extremely well finished. This was one of several planes, including my own, that had the unfortunate uh, luck of having a semi-crash at the Nationals that... Uh, destroyed a good part of the top block and the rudder and uh, did get fixed. It did get brought back to like new status and uh, new canopy and whatnot. And lives to fly again.
they were pretty much a copy of Billy Suarez's pattern master. They even copied most of the paint job. Did an outstanding job of making a, uh, a clone of his airplane. I got to fly this plane at Harrisburg. I think it's on the Harrisburg tape, and it is, it is a super flying plane. And Billy, of course, uh, if you've been watching TV, I guess years from now you'll forget it, but there's a Honda commercial. Uh, where Danny goes in fishing and uh, the frog says to him, I'll take it. Well, this is, we've all been walking past Suarez's plane and, and Al Reed's been saying, I'll take it, I'll take it. Well, maybe years from now we'll forget about the commercial, but right now it's, it's still funny. Entry here, Jose Modesto has a new plane. We'll try to get some of that on video. <laughs> this will be the warm up flight for the judges. Al Reed warming up the judges here. Bill Suarez launching. Pattern Master, Big Jim Super Tiger 60, Big Jim Tank. Of course, it's a Big Jim design.
Jose, you want to buy that? Jose, I'll sell it to you cheap. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Team Cotton Master here. I'll take it. I'll take it. Joe Adamusco still littering up the property with paper towels here. Let's see if we can get Joe's flight on video. We uh, really would like to since we're selling plans to his plane now. We have to be able to show what a nice plane it is. And it's a beauty. It is absolutely a beautiful elliptical wing plane. Flies well, 40, 46. All the ribs are shown on the plans. Outstanding. Now we'll waddle down here and do Joe's flight.
battery light coming on. We may not get the end of Joe's flight. Well, we're just running till the battery runs out. Anyway, turning out to be a super day. The breeze is coming up a little bit now, more than before. But it looks like it will hold out really nice. And normally, what we do after the Johnsville contest is try to get most or all of the contestants together. Right next door to here is a ground round, and we kind of have a little stunt party of our own to cap off a day. And I'm sure the, uh, we'll have a good turnout today for sure. years ago at the Johnsville meet, well that was the one that was uh, the day after the Sussex Air Show. What was really neat about it is the contest was over relatively early and we had about four hours to fly each other's planes and uh, just had a good old time. And we really took advantage of it, we flew right to dark, it was really great. point of my uh, career, that's for sure. My illustrious career in uh, journalism here. That is one super day, isn't it? Boy, I wish we had some of these back home. Back home, all we get is the uh, the roughies and the lumpies and the bumpies. And the, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to thunderstorm, but you may get electrocuted anyway kind of oh, thing. Here we go. That. Oh my God. Yeah, I almost Joe got electrocuted at Coxsackie. Joe was telling me. I got a big burn on my hand and everything. This is not funny at all. Grease it, Joe. Grease it. Oh, right. Hey. I'll take it. I'll take it. I guess this guy's going to rob a bank here. He's got a mask on his phone. Give me the money. Give me all the money. Slaps and a slow laps. Let's see what the guy looks like while he's doing this. Stop the plane in midair.
Oh, the smell of 60% nitro here. Mmm. Mmm, smells so good. See all the RC events, all the free flight events. It's almost like a little national. See, it's really neat. Got a big turnout in combat today. Maybe get some of that on video. I don't know. See how long our battery packs are holding up here. There they go. There they go. Showtime. Poor baby. It is one of the nice things about the contest. We got a lot of people helping other people here. There's a guy teaching somebody in a beginner the pattern. And of course it's okay to read him the pattern. Rather than leave out a maneuver or whatever. A lot of good sportsmanship going on here today. It's a good meet. It's going to be a fun one. Al Reed on an official flight here. Suarez practicing super aggressively here. He's gone through about a gallon of fuel already this morning. So should do well when it comes time, push comes to shove. Bob Lampione on the other hand, not doing well at all. <laughs> Looks like he's a little nervous putting in his bottoms as usual. What do you got? Oh, you really time! All right. Smile, smile, lady. Hey. No one is safe. No one is safe. What are you doing? You just can't win around here, huh, Bill? The camera tells all. Sees all. No editing. No Close editing. Most people at the bathroom stalls. That's okay. A single bound. No, no problemo. <laughs> Where's Jose? He told me to come down here and shoot his flight. Now he's not here. He's I'm going to jack the price. Wait till he goes. He wants one of the copies of these tapes. Oh, oh, that's 30 cool. bucks. That's all. We're fair. Unbiased. Jose, you're in big trouble. Nah, I'm leaving. The heck with him. Yeah, you could have been a national champion, you know. Listen, it says it on my air. Just read. What does it say? It says you could have been? I could have been. Right? Wannabes. Should have, could have been. Should have been, could have been, wannabe, could have been. It's like yesterday when Big Jim says, look at Mike, he's doing that hooker stunt again. <laughs> Where's Mike? He went out again? Oh, he's flying. All these guys are afraid to come and take their turn in the barrel. It's unbelievable, Bob. I know. I think you're the only real man among them, and I'm not so sure about you. <laughs> 
There's Karen. There's Karen. Look, forget She'll about it. it. I don't know. She says you kiss funny. <laughs> but there's the one problem of being middle aged right there. That's it. What it's waistline right? you got now? About a 60? Uh, I don't get smart. <laughs> You look like you're putting I'm, on I'm some... Still, I'm still squeezing into 38s. Squeeze You want to get a pair of 38s and see if you can fit in them? <laughs> Regulations. Yeah, Only buy... 38s with elastic, buddy. Buy... Yeah. The Bob Lampione pants. The Guido pants. <laughs> the ones Randy Smith had at the Nats, they were great. The Bob Lampione specials. Lampione design of shoes. his body on. Well, some people care, some people don't. Yeah, I'm like, stuck. I don't even do that, and I, I live in an apartment with a person. I keep telling them, you, you, the bottom you'll have to save, just refinish the top. And the well, fuel white on the top is not safe. The white you left is all right. Okay. And then you put the name. The name wasn't in last year, wasn't it? No. The name's the easiest part. You just go get decals and glue them on. Oh, that's not decals, is it? <laughs> Even the, hey, I'm here to video your flight. You ready? Anytime you're ready, Jose. Yeah, I just have to get Yeah, I know, I know. This guy cut ahead of us. He was flying a PM. It's terrible. Oh, I didn't mind it. I got two for 300. I'll take them. Buck and a half a piece. I'll take them. They're not brand new, but they're good motors. I'll take them as long as the cases are solid, so you can stick them in the Buck and a half a piece. Oh, what a bargain. Have you already been reworked by Big Jim? No, not reworked. They're oh. stuck. Tell them you want to rework for 150. Yeah, rework. I'll rework you for 150. I got two left, Jose, if you want them. I'll take them. Retiring all your 60s? No, I got, one I got nine of them. Oh, okay. Well, I guess you could sell them. I want. could sell two, right? What the hell? Well, I got to pay for Karen's operation, you know. Is she going to need it? What about the <laughs> It still looks like she's not. Nah. Yeah. We don't know yet. Yeah. Your medication's working pretty good. Well, that's good. I don't see any reason to have nine motors. I mean, I've accumulated them. And but you're in the business. You're supposed to have a little antique case. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to yeah, keep, keep five, five or six. And keep five or six. Well, Jose, we always have motors. Oh. Well, come over during the week and we'll make a deal. <laughs> Jose Modesto, finally going to get one of his flights on video.
sound and speed jobs going on down there. Uh, Waddle on in and check out the speed event. They had some real, really high speed jobs going before. Like, I think I hear one now in the back. Nice to go to a meet where there's several events in between flights. You can run down and uh, check out all the other events to carry, to combat the speed. Team racing, Dynajet speed, the scale. Kind of neat. A lot of action going on here, a lot of activity. Johnsville, Wendy Erdnowski, first flight. Red Baron, VMAX 46, Jim Greenaway Hemi. Wendy's just come back from the scale circle where this plane has been judged for standoff scale. He's flying it in two events today. Amid mirrored protests from certain Jersey Bay scale flyers. Wind is blowing from behind us at about 5 miles an hour. Temperature is mid-80s.
down at the scale circle, we're going to get our flight in in scales. This is sport scale, of course, a couple of the stunt ship prevented. We got about 10 entries here, I'm not sure. We've been flying all morning and we've uh, been treated to some really nice flying in the scale circle here, so we're going to try to get our scale flight in and then uh, maybe even get a practice flight before we go out and try to catch Billy. Billy is now the leader of the first round in, uh, in style over on the sun circle. Okay, we have El Mundro going for his second official of the day. Currently in second place on the board, Billy Suarez just popped a Beautiful second flight, has Windy by about 20 points. And I feel an attempt coming on. Okay, take two with a new starter battery. Windy with his final attempt.
gonna have to show you how to do that with me. I need lessons, Bob. I need lessons. The results were uh, Billy Suarez, first place in stunt. Wendy was second. Uh, Lampione was third. Great weather, a great contest, and uh, maybe we'll have a little footage on the end here for the trophy presentation. I don't know if we're going to get it or not. Speech, Suarez! Speech, speech, speech! Suarez is running on the Democratic ticket with Bill Clinton for, uh, what is he running for? I don't know. He's running for his life. Yeah, what kinds of stuff like that? Oh, no, Mr. Relentless. We know this didn't go to your head or anything, Suarez. Where are you taking us for dinner, Bill? Yeah, I know. <laughs> now how it changes, well, how it story changes. I mean, the second flight depends on how much money you <laughs> have. I didn't make any money today. How can I thank you guys? Well, you didn't sell anything today? No, uh, not to you. Bill has a real expensive restaurant, just to oh, <laughs> so much You gotta keep the tradition, this, Bill. This is not like the mask up right now. No, baloney. <laughs> I got the mask up. You're not getting that back. It's Midgley's starting to win that. Anyway, we got fourth in scale. Wayne Gilchrist the, was fifth, and a very, a very poor loser, I might add. <laughs> Soon to be known as Bad Loser Gilchrist. <laughs> anyway, we had a lot of fun in scale. Billy won the stunt. The abuse had a great we have to flight. take from this, from this video oh, cam. What else? Lampion complained about the judge and relentlessly. Oh, 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 <laughs> complained about Lorraine. <laughs> Always, always. Complains about it. I didn't beat Willie. Musco got second place, even though he didn't deserve it. I don't know. Tell him what he deserved. Tell him everything. <laughs> he loved, he loved the judge. And my wife got the best present of all, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she told me you rub her the wrong way. Yeah, I rub her feet the wrong way. <laughs> See at the mask up, sucker. He doesn't find a lot of this. On the pride of Sea Caucus, New Jersey, Karen Ertin had a Circle burn is old plane technology. Do you have one for that gun? It's an epoch. I built it for that plane. Oh, okay. 70 foot lights so it scared the hell out of me. What? No, it is enough room now. Is there? Did they cut? Yeah, Duck and Meadow went flying, you know, in close and they cut all the trees down. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.